Good morning, guys. It is Friday, October 13th, and I'm headed into work. So it is fall break for me, um, and well, technically it's like the last day of fall break. Also, I'm sorry if the camera's shaky. I'm in my truck, and this road is bumpy. So I apologize. Also, I'm really zoomed in. Whoa. Um, yeah, so I'm literally pulling into the school right now. I stopped at Starbucks and got a decaf pumpkin spice latte and two waters. I also got my favorite spicy chorizo sandwich to munch on for breakfast. I plan on going into work for a few hours. I have a couple things I need to do. I need to get my conference sheets to take home because I'm going to work on those to tomorrow. Um, just they're like my conference notes just things to remember to talk about with each kiddo um i need to get my information for my pbl that i'm planning um uploaded and ready to print so that i can pass that out on monday and then i also need to get my plans finalized for the next two weeks so i'm teaching um a specific standard for the next two weeks and i would like to get all of my stuff kind of printed out and ready to go that way um I can just kind of cruise into school and not have like a stressful morning or like have any prep in the morning and just kind of like get to school. Um, I only have two weeks left of work and then I'm on maternity leave. So I would really like to have a nice smooth last two weeks and then, uh, you know, go on off on my maternity leave, which I feel really strange saying that I have two weeks left of work, but it is what it is. Um, really cool. We got our car seat installed. I don't know if you guys can see it back there, but I think we're going to end up moving it to the middle. I don't know. I've heard mixed like ideas. Um, the, a firefighter friend of ours told us that it might be safer for him to be in the middle. Um, it has the same hookup, uh, but that people don't like putting them in the middle because it's like more to lean over, but our truck doesn't have a lot of back seat space and like right now this seat right here is so far up that whoever sits in it is going to be like hunched over and guess who's sitting in that seat when I go into labor me so I'm like uh, I don't know about that so in the comments below let me know where do you guys put your infant car seats do you put them on the side the passenger passenger side behind you or do you put them in the middle um I know in my car it won't be such a big deal because there's a lot more back seat space but in this truck it's just really like tight back there so I don't know we're kind of thinking about moving him to the middle So I'm in my classroom now. Um, <laughs> I rearranged it a little bit since last time I vlogged in here. It's not really any, any big difference. I moved this table here. I put the big table over there and then I moved the black tables over there under the window. Not a huge change. Also, we have book bins instead of binders now. Um, the kiddos voted. They wanted book bins. Uh, and I'm actually really glad because <laughs> they can fit a lot more in them and I don't have to worry about pens and pencils and stuff being everywhere. So I'm really glad that we switched, but I need to make a to-do list. That way I can be really productive while I'm here and not just like fart around. But let's see, where's my, okay. I'm gonna just write it on a note card because I don't know where my to-do list is at the moment. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to... Okay, 
I already have my conference sheets done and printed out. I just needed to remember to take them home. So maybe I'll just grab those now. So my conference sheets that I use are from TPT. I don't remember exactly which um, person sold them. They were a freebie. So if you type in um, parent-teacher conference freebie, I'm sure you'll find it. But it comes with all kinds of really neat things. It comes with a conference reminder sheet, which I need to fill out and send home. The kids that are doing their conference on Monday won't get one, obviously. Um, it comes with a sign-in sheet so that you have that. It comes with this teacher conference notes, which is what I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to take these home this weekend and fill them out. That way I'm ready to go. And then this, actually, I found a TPT in a separate file, but it's a self evaluation and I'm gonna actually have the kids do this first thing on Monday morning so that I have them ready to go for their conferences um, I think I only have like two on Monday let me see all right so I am looking at the resources that I pulled and found for my standard that I'll be teaching for the next two weeks and I just wanted to show you guys both of these items were found on teachers pay teachers <gasps> If you're a fourth grade teacher, these will be great for you. If you're not a fourth grade teacher, this will be nothing to you at all. Um, but I am gonna be teaching reading literature um, 4.9, which is comparing and contrasting the treatment of similar themes and topics, the opposition of good and evil, and the patterns of events, the quest, in stories, myths, and traditional literature from different cultures. So what I plan to do is the first week just teach themes, um, topics, um, patterns of events, things like that. Basic, general, get the, con the content taught. Then the second week, I plan on doing my great big Cinderella unit, which I think I got this from Teachers Pay Teachers last year, but um, I really, really liked doing it. Um, the kids really liked it. It's like all about all these different Cinderella stories and the kids compare them to the original and it's really really engaging really really um, great for uh, the five C's because it forces the kids to work together and that's what we want so I'm just downloading these to my desktop right now and then I'm going to print them and let's cross our fingers that the printer is working today because if it's not I'm gonna be really cranky and then that will be ready. I'll have that all finished for the week. <laughs> Looks like there's no paper in there, so I'm gonna have to bring some of my own. Okay, come on, I really need you to move. I don't have time for your fiddle faddle. Okay, I'm gonna print, this is 84 pages, so I don't know if I wanna do that. I might just wait and look through it and print the pages I need because that's a lot of paper. Bin. Let's just make sure there's nothing in here that's unnecessary. This is my first resource that I'm going to be using for the first week. It's got four mini lessons, so I'm really super excited. This will be a great introduction to my Cinderella unit. Also, if you have to provide your own paper, don't ever forget it in the copy machine.
I'm gonna make copies of all these things. So what I've done is I have got all my materials that I need for this lesson and I've marked them with a post-it note, individual or partner. So this is going to be their notes page for while I'm teaching and this will be given to each individual student. Then I will give each individual student a double-sided um, story text. Um, there's different text on each page so they each need one of these. Then as partners, they will compare and contrast the two stories. So I just put partner on here. Um, I made enough for each partnership to have one. And then these are the individual questions and responses for each individual student. So I put individual on here as well. All right, guys. <clears throat> so I just created a couple of anchor charts. The first one is one about folk tales. And then the one underneath tells all the different types, so fairy tales, fables, legends, tall tales, and um, myths. And um, now I'm pretty much ready for reading for the whole week, and we're pretty much going to do reading like all day for the whole week. So I'm actually just going to put my um, schedule up on the board now. That way Monday morning when I walk in, I don't have to do it. Hey guys, okay, so I'm getting ready to leave school. I did get lots of stuff done. I have my drinks in my purse and I'm walking out. So I am gonna go to Chipotle and grab some food and then I'm gonna go over to Jennifer's house and hang out with her for a little bit and do some planning over there because I have one more thing I need to do, my project-based learning assignment, and I can do that from her house. So I'm gonna just do that there. Let's make sure the door's shut. <sighs> Getting in the car, nine months pregnant, is a challenge. <sighs> also, I need to make sure that I put my keys back in my purse where they belong, so that I don't lose them. Because let me tell you, this school year alone, I have forgotten my keys four times. It's popping around here. Hey Jennifer. Yes, we're working on fall break. Don't judge us. So it's we're fun. we printed out our Galileo math scores because we took them last week. Yeah, the week before, before fall break. break. Yeah, um, so we printed out our scores, and we're just going through and highlighting in different colors. So the standards here are um, the ones in pink didn't get taught before the test was given, um, and then the ones with the purple arrows did get taught. And then the scores are highlighted by, stupid. Okay, anyway, um, so 80% or higher is in blue. Um, ready now, which is 60% or higher is in green. Then 40% is yellow. And then 0% learned is orange. So you can see like this standard. I didn't even teach this and they all freaking learned it. What's except for one. Like? Except for one, and he's not in my class. It's find all the factor pairs. Yeah, they didn't get that from me, because we don't do that in third grade. It must have been, like, a super easy question. Yeah. Um, and then over here, I just wrote how many kids either learned or got at 60% or higher out of 19 assessed. These three questions were worded so terribly, yeah. these kids bombed it. Even an adult would yeah. have issues. This is what it looks like. 
So obviously lots of orange, lots of yellow, but the good news is that the ones that I did t teach, there was a good amount of done. And then Jennifer's doing hers over there too. Hey guys, so I'm home now and I'm eating a snack. This is Mioki from Trader Joe's. I'm watching, okay, no. I'm watching KK and Baby J's vlog, drinking the water, and I'm waiting for one of my videos to share to make a file so that I can delete it from iMovie so that I can up so I can upload today's footage. But I just realized I never ever end vlogs. Like I'm the worst at ending vlogs. So I'm officially ending today's <gasps> vlog. What are you looking at? What's up, dog? Anyways, yes, I'm ending today's vlog, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!